Hey guys, Sporn is here. Welcome back to another video. So yeah, today, uh, this is a, well, a different video. Um, I fancy doing something a bit different today. Um, today, what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how why I get my music for my YouTube videos. Um, I actually compose it myself, um, primarily because I own all the rights to the content then. Um, but yeah, this is a short tutorial on how I compose my music. Now, yeah, today I'm using Mixcraft 6 Pro Studio as my digital audio workstation. Um, this is basically a multi-track um, audio, um, yeah, like composition software. So, and the Pro, Stu yeah, Pro Studio of Mixcraft is about £100, so it costs quite a bit of money to purchase it. Um, but it's entirely worth it because you can do many things with it and yeah I've composed many tracks in the past with Mixcraft and it's generally um, a good um, place to start if you're either a beginner or a novice um, like uh, music composition. It's even good for some people like in the mid-range who have had, like a bit of experience. Um, personally I wouldn't say go with Mixcraft if you are an expert uh, most people like in the music franchise they will often use like FL Studio or yeah Logic um, something a bit more advanced um, but yeah it's good for the money in my opinion um, yeah FL Studio for example the top package you can get without all the VST plugins is about £600 so yeah it's way out of my price range <laughs> Um, but without further ado, today I'm going to be making a short dubstep beat. Now, yeah, you're going to actually need one instrument to download. You're going to need the CS Bass one. Uh, when you install it, it'll go into VSTI instruments. Um, and basically, yeah, it's an amazing plugin. Um, and you can create some really awesome, uh, yeah, well, modulated bass. So yeah, it comes with a few presets as well, so yeah, but you can also fine tune it with all the dials. I'll go through each one um, gradually. Um, okay, so I'll provide a link to this in the description, and it's actually really easy to install. Um, all you've got to do is basically download the DLL file, and I'll just show you. Uh, I've installed it into here. Uh, let me just find my... Uh, where is it? Uh, Mixcraft, where have you gone? There you are. Yeah. Basically, all you've got to do is drag and drop it into your VST folder, which is their third part. Of, yeah, just drop the DLL file into your VST folder in your, yeah, your digital audio workstation. Um, but yeah. Once you've done that, just restart your software and it'll have loaded. And it should appear in your instrument preset list. Okay, so, yeah, today we're going to be creating a short dubstep beat. Um, yeah, I'm actually experimenting as I go here, so, yeah, it could take a bit of time. But, yeah, without further ado, let's get into this. So, yeah, with Mixcraft, you get an onboard um, playable keyboard as well, which is good. Um, it can really help if you don't have a, yeah, a MIDI keyboard. Uh, all you've got to do is click musical type and it's here. And you've got pitch bend and modulation, velocity, etc. It's all controllable. Um, and oh, that's a bit loud, I think. <laughs> I'll turn that down. Yeah. Okay, so this is the first preset that I've got. It's called Hello Bass. Um, but to start with, I want you to use Quark. Um, that's a decent one, I think. Yeah, it gives you the intense whoop 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 noise um, but yeah we're gonna adjust this slightly so first thing you've just got to play it and hold it so yeah and you basically experiment to find out what you like and what will suit the song um, after we've got this sorted we might work on a dubstep um, well yeah a drum beat sort of um, but yeah let's get the main like core riff sorted out first so, yeah, I'm starting on the C3, uh, yeah, so that's about mid-range, let's go, so let's just do some experimentation to find something. 
Okay, that's sounding quite decent to be honest. Um, now, I'm just going to quickly go through each of these um, and just to make sure we've got this preset, I'll just save it under a new name. Um, I'll save it as new, like that. Right, so we're not going to lose that now. Um, okay, so waveform. This is basically, yeah, you can get different um, yeah waveforms. It's hard to explain. Um, yeah, it's just your general audio wave. If you if you expand a music sample, it's basically a longitudinal wave, and this is the shape of the wave, so you can have square, triangle, or sine. Uh, sine is like a curvy line, uh, triangle is like, yeah, diagonal up and down, and then square is like up, then <laughs> across, down, up, across, down, yeah. Um, but, and then, wavetable, I'm not too sure what that is, um, but yeah, you can get different waveforms. Um, I'm not going to go into depth, um, but yeah, I've selected a wavetable for. Um, sub oscillation, this is basically like, yeah, your bass. Um, yeah, if you want to like make it really powerful and modulated, you've got to like increase this to the highest, I'd say. Um, overdrive, that's basically, yeah, it's overdrive. <laughs> um, yeah, it gives like the the, well, yeah, the instrument more energy. Um, filter cut, um, that's basically, yeah, it cuts the overdrive out of the oscillation, so you get a purer, um, a purer oscillation. So if I just play that, um, I'll show you what I mean. See, there's no filter there. Um, it's basically allowing all of it to pass through. Um, but if I decrease it all the way, see how it basically it filters out the noise. Um, then resonance. Um, this is basically yeah the resonance of the audio. So yeah, if I increase the cut now. See the difference that that makes. Uh, reverb, that's basically the echo in the background. Um, yeah, preferably with something like this, you should keep it low because yeah, it, you don't want that echoing in the background. Um, you're better off with a purer sound. So yeah, that's sounding pretty decent now. Um, envelope attack. This is basically. If you increase this to the highest, you'll get a great, like a gradual increase of the note. So, yeah, but if you decrease that, it's just instantaneous, like that. Um, decay, uh, I'm not too sure about decay, but yeah, I'll have to look into that, uh, but it's not really important. Sustain, you want that up to the highest, um, basically if you sustain as well, like, the note will drop after a period of time, so if I decrease that now, see how it just fades to nothing. Um, if you want it to stay forever, you want it on the maximum. Um, release, that's basically when you release the note, it'll fade out, so if I put that to the full, I've actually released the note there and it's staying, so yeah. You want that on a tiny bit just to give it that bit of extra oomph um, when you release the note, but just don't overdo that. Um, F mod, now that is basically the frequency of the oscillations um, that you're producing, so if I increase that. Yeah, that's basically your oscillation frequency. Um, and then, I'm not sure what that stands for, FTRCK, well, FTRK, sorry. Um, but it's like the amplitude. So, yeah. It's the amplitude of the oscillation. That, um, and then, octave up, that's basically shifting the entire like note up an octave. So if I press that. Yeah, it's basically shifting the note up and off the, like, yeah, octave. Um, and then glide, um, this is pretty good glide, what it does. So for example, if I go from one note to another, 
what glide will do, it'll basically transition it. So. Let's turn it off. There's more of a, yeah, a glide between the notes. <laughs> um, but yeah, anyway, let's just word up the preset again. So. So we've got this instrument sorted now, um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to quickly sort out the tempo of the, uh, the song, set it to about 140 beats per minute, um, that's generally what dubstep is, um, and yeah, that should be good now. Okay, so, a typical dubstep beat has lots of different types and waveforms of like, oscillations, so I'll show you a quick one that I've made. Um, let's cancel that, uh, open up a new one, no, uh, let's see, if I go up another folder, uh, up another folder, is it, um, hmm, <laughs> uh, oh yeah, might be that one actually, <laughs> beast, <laughs> I've got some weird project names, so, Uh, yeah, it might be this one. You see how the frequency changes? Um, if I just solo that track, I'll show you in more detail. So, yeah. Oh, wrong one. <laughs> uh, is that one. Let's solo that. Now, I bet you're wondering how I've actually done that. That is actually um, automation of a track, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. So, yeah, that's just a quick sample of what you can do with it. Um, but obviously, you can do other things. You can have multiple instruments, um, and yeah, have different, like, waveforms to get a different sound of each note, which can be quite interesting. So, uh, let's just not save that. Uh, Maybe it's in projects. Uh, I'm trying to think which one I'm looking for here. No, no. Uh, I'm gonna have to look here. Ah, it's there. <laughs> All the way up. Right. Uh, it's this one I want. See, what I've done here, this is actually all the same instrument, but if you look at some of the presets, what I've done, um, each one is different, and, yeah, oh, got wrong one, uh, custom, yeah, see how, like, I've basically got different presets for each, like, instrument, um, and that's how you can actually alter some of the notes, so, yeah, this is what I've got right now. <laughs> That's just a quick sample of what you can do with the, um, the plugin. Um, but anyway, let's get back to yeah the one that we are going to make. So a quick one I'm going to do is going to delete these tracks and then we'll insert some instrument tracks, which is Control E for Mixcraft. Uh, delete that audio track and set U to 140. Like that. And then let's get making this track. So. VST instruments, you want to select the CS bass one uh, and then the print, well, the preset that we just made or the preset you've made, so which is that one, and then let's go. Now I want to bring up the musical typing actually, and now I've basically got to find uh, a decent riff, so <laughs> this could take a bit of time. Right, we've got us riff. Uh, yeah, sometimes it can take a bit of experimentation to actually find something you like. Um, but yeah, once you've got your main riff, you can then sort out a drum beat and 
guess we'll find something that works. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna whirl this by not to see if it sounds better. <laughs> Right, what I want to do now is simply record that, and then, which I can hit key R, which will arm it for me. And that's it, I basically recorded it now. And now I can edit this track, uh, which won't take long. I've just got to basically syncopate the notes, so that... Oh, I've just inserted a new one. Syncopate the notes so that it's all in time. And then we're all ready. We can start playing around. Actually, I want to set that to about one sixteenth. Sure it doesn't, yeah, get too accurate. Set the loop end, and then we can basically start playing around. Ah, oh, okay. So now, earlier, I was saying you can actually automate these. Now, what you've got to do is basically go on Toggle Automation. Now, this is different depending on what software you're using, but it's generally the same, like, process. So, yeah, then you want to go to CS Base 1, and then for the oscillation frequency, it is Modify F Mod. Uh, that's what you want to look for. Now, if I basically, yeah, create a point and then adjust this, it'll adjust the frequency, so... Um, let's find some notes that will work here. Now, just off the door, I can tell that the frequency is a bit too high. Because you want to make it so that the F mod, um, yeah, is synced with the end of the note. So... Still a tiny bit high. Now we can either do two things now. We can basically adjust the modifier of the F mod to make the frequencies higher on one instrument. Um, or we can have multiple instruments and then basically, yeah, adjust it dependent on that. So, I think I'm going to do the other way because... Um, yeah, it's a tiny tad easier, and it, it takes a lot of time to actually syncopate um, all the frequency of oscillations with the beat uh, using the F mod, so I'm still having trouble using that now, So, but it is a good feature to have. Um, okay, so then, let's basically duplicate this track um, a couple of times, so we've already got this, uh, and then what I'm going to do, I'm going to delete specific notes, so let's delete you. Let's delete you, and then, and then, hang on a minute, let's delete that, delete that, delete that, let's delete that, delete that, delete that. Right, so we've still actually got notes on each one now, but they're actually using different instruments, so. <laughs> Now we can actually adjust all of these instruments, um, and they're not dependent on each other now. So yeah, let's just adjust this one and see if it can work well. Uh, let's get rid of you, show details, edit, and then uh, let's increase the overdrive, decrease sub oscillation, uh, decrease cut, increase resonance, let's see how that sounds now. Uh, now that actually sounds pretty decent in my opinion. Uh, let's increase the reverb. Now what I'm going to do, just quickly, I'm going to move that down there, and I'm then going to highlight this specific area and then we can loop play back and then adjust it manually and we don't have to stop it. I'll just decrease it a bit so I can even actually hear me speak. Um, right. Okay, right. Now, this is actually sounding pretty decent now. Um, 
But yeah, I'm afraid I'm gonna have to cut this video a bit short today, peeps. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, I may go in advance with this at a later date. Um, if you want to see that, leave a comment in the description below, and I shall um, carry on this tutorial, and we'll see where we can get with this song. So yeah, without further ado, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to leave it a like, and of course, peace out. Have a good one.